Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about good engineering principles. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, does the work become more enjoyable when you follow all the best engineering practices and build the software the way it should be? Nope, it does not. Well, it really depends on your perspective. So, the problem is that saying that the way it should be, guys, I have to kind of break it to you. The way software should be built is so that it does the thing that the user or whoever is going to consume the value of the thing that you're making, uh, that that's working. If you go back, say, 50 years, there was a way you should make a lot of stuff and it's changed since then for a lot of other for, for a lot of reasons and today there's a new way things should be done because things are always moving things are always evolving so yours and this is something that software developers they if you want to really get this thing down and become a real software senior or like a real master of coding you really have to understand that guys that there will always be another tool there will always be a better way of doing things and the thing that you are making right now even if you have dotted all your i's and crossed all the t's and done the most perfect thing that you can possibly imagine it is already waiting to become obsolete in favor of something else the only thing that stands the test of time in software engineering is that things change uh, that's the only constant is probably a better way of formulating it and so for me sure I know for a fact that this is there it's actually very dangerous because a lot of software developers have this mental itch I like to call it or like the the, the green goblin uh, sort of trolls in their head that will punish them if they don't make things in a way that they are convinced that things has to be done. And so this, this is the thing that I coach my team, my software developers uh, with. Um, I try to teach them the difference between being relig a religious believer in something and actually knowing what a good solution looks like. I'll give you an example the other day I was talking to my team about we were running a system that uh, as as part of our release process we have a, a QA environment where we do most of our internal testing before we do a release into production now our system is a high integration system it's basically just the interface uh, a UI application made in react on top of a gigantic ecosystem of microservices tons and tons and tons and tons of microservices I think we have 13 between 13 and 20 integrations to just fetch our data and show it on a screen for different stakeholders across the company right and these different environments well they all have different policies for how they provide us with data so some of the API's they have a QA environment themselves where they seed the databases with test data and some environments don't so some stuff is from production data in this environment they were running right some of it is from production and some of it is from from uh, test systems that have fake data now the problem we've had historically is that there is no way for us actually to use that environment effectively for our testing because we can never trust that the information is going to be there it might be broken at any given moment or the data that we need to run certain tests is actually not there because that specific API that we're using does not feel the need to update their system or provide us with that information because it's not a priority for them. But we, uh, we still have it and so I basically stated to my team that due to the fact that the only environment that we can use is the production environment in order uh, that's because it became the norm we, where we literally had to test, uh, test things in production because there was the only way for us to actually test certain features because the features that we have depend on the data and we can't write our own data we can only consume. So that test environment is just like something, this like data source that we have no control over 
And so I told my team, since we're already doing most of our testing in production, let's just kill the, uh, the test environment and then refocus our efforts to be really, really good at feature flagging and making sure that testing in production feels you know, because we're never actually writing things to the production environments, we're just simply consuming things and showing them. Uh, so let's get really good at feature flagging, uh, canary releases, end-to-end -end testing in production and so forth, so that it feels safe for us to release things in production, try them out with feature flagging or sort of similar such a solution, and validate that it works. And then, you know, if something does break, we can use a feature flag to disable it or roll things back or roll forward, which is probably a better solution. Now, with that suggestion, we st that's of course spurred a bit of a debate between myself and a few of the others and the QA engineer. Because the QA engineer could not imagine how we could possibly work without a QA environment. Because surely we have to have a QA environment so that we can do manual testing before we go to production. And we had a very long discussion that went back and forth on this exact topic where I tried, we tried to explain to this person that you can actually not test manually or even with automation, we cannot use the QA environment in the way that is necessary for us to be confident in that things are working in production. Therefore, this has actually not been something we have used, so why keep it around? And it was like talking to a parrot, but we need a QA environment because, you know, you have to be able to validate things before you release them into production. And I go, no, you don't. Because if you have a way to release safely into a production environment, and I showed like articles and so forth where, you know, you can read about canary releases, like there are tons of ways to get around the need for a QA environment. A QA environment is a godsend if you can, as I like to say, tell people, if you have, if you own your entire system, if you have like a single monolith or something like that, or you have, uh, you, you control all the necessary components you have in order to spin up a realistic environment that's very, very closely mimics the pro production environment, a QA environment can be a very useful thing. But that is simply not the situation we are in. We are in this really bad situation when it comes to running a QA environment. So this is actually a solution that will make us focus on getting better at testing in production, which is the only real way for us to be certain that the code is working. Yet I could, we could not reach this individual with the really weird idea that we don't need a QA environment. Because this person was so religiously believed, uh, was believed so religiously in the so-called best practices, which is from a QA's perspective, having a staging environment or a QA environment. I mean, this is like this, is like the one-on-one uh, -on -one for QA engineers. This is the bread and butter of what they do or what testers do. That's not always the case, but it is the standard playbook for almost all serious forms of uh, um, application development. And most times that you do work in a software company, you will sort of expect that there is a QA environment. But as I said, that is usually because the situation allows you to do that sort of testing. But if you don't understand the difference between when the... Okay, if you don't understand why you have the QA environment, then you only are, you're really only left with a value system that tells you how to do something. It's sort of like people who think that functional programming is the only way to program, but they don't actually understand what the benefits of using it is, or object-oriented programming, or people who believe in, I don't know, in dependency injection or microservices or whatever. If you can't tell the difference between religious belief and the underlying reason as to why this solution is a good solution and when to use that solution, then you will always feel sad, practically. Because you, you, you are literally, it's sort of like going around and being upset that the world isn't a better place than it is, and so forth and so forth. You're never ever going to be able to satisfy all those mental gremlins, so the thing that actually has to change Sometimes it is definitely the code that needs to change. But if you if you if you don't watch yourself, you're going to spend so much time becoming frustrated and angry. This happens to a lot of the philosopher programmers, we, not because you are correct, 
but because you believe that you are possessing the only viewpoint that is valid and the best part is that you believe so not because you have any proof or you have actually thought this thing through but rather because you have been convinced in sim a similar way to a religious fanatic that there is a universal answer to how to write good software under all circumstances. So what I want you to take away from this is that it is unfortunately very enjoyable for people in software development to be very happy and feel enjoyment when they get to do things quote unquote the right way. And I myself feel it's really nice when we do things the quote unquote right way. The problem is that a lot of people have different opinions on what the right way is and you find that a lot of people f get really really frustrated very quickly when there's a difference in opinion on what the right way is. And that's why I tell people that your best investment in order to mature as a software developer is to truly understand the problem that you are solving and realize that there are many ways to solving the same problem and you really have to take your time to truly understand why each solution works in a certain situation and why in which circumstances it might be doesn't really matter if it's that solution or something else and then be a little bit pragmatic or when you really shouldn't use that solution because then my friend then you're thinking you're not just responding emotionally to things that you believe are true have a great day